Sub shooters, my name is Logan aka Spiderhands and welcome to Nespy Reviews where today we have ourselves some tracks off of an album titled Existing Between the Grey A Silver Glow from an act named Harbour Ghost. And if we switch over to here, we have ourselves on Music B. We're going to be listening through three of these tracks off of this album today. La Petite More, The New You, and The Reminiscent Room. And we're going to listen through each of these tracks from start to finish. And we're going to hear what we think. Let's go. It's kind of fantastic starting all these synthy textures, you know? Straight to the point, cut to the chase. Really intriguing sound design, you know? It's a great first impression with some <laughs> sounds occasionally. I, mean, I hate to interrupt the verse because I'm enjoying the flow of it and the variation and the rhythms and little melody bits, but um, it's fantastic from an arrangement perspective. I'm, I'm loving the the combination of those sort of synthy guitar parts as well as the pads, the low low basses, and, and also the interesting filtered bits of percussion on there. Just a, a subtle groove, but it's moving us along, you know? That kick chord note accent. Nice side chaining there. Really beautiful twinkles. Are these sample drums? Like how are they arranging and producing this? It's so full sounding and it's got this lovely, um, very simple chord progression that is just uh, given so much depth by the layering of these really misty reverb soaked synths. It's I wasn't expecting the it to get so heavy though. And in fact, I was wondering if that was going to be like a drum kit they were using because I, I couldn't have expected they were going to become this distorted guitars and this kind of middle chorus kind of vibe. You know, it's fantastic. Maybe some proggy kind of genty stuff. You know, so pretty. You got a combination of these 80s kind of sequences with these bass synths. These synthetic electronic elements in there with the hard rock or metal kind of distorted guitars and drums. A few growls in there. You know, it's it's wonderful. Combination of textures. You know, it's a fantastic way to get into this band. I like the fact that it wasn't predictable and easy to follow along to in the sense that I couldn't just kind of tell her. I couldn't figure out what was going to happen next. There was enough variation, especially with the post-production kind of glitching of that kind of stuff to keep me intrigued and interested the whole way. I mean, at least initially, I wasn't sure about the vocals and the levels of them in the mix. And it could be one of these situations where it's either so 
full sounding that it's almost like the the vocals are meant to be kind of kind of uh interfered with by the mid other mid elements of the range but i know they've also filtered the vocals quite a bit to help them to stand out it's the nature of what they're trying to sort of approach with this music when you've got such um complex arrangements it can be difficult to get the right layer level of the vocals but i think they've managed to do it at the end especially it was easier to hear them in the end once everything came in i think they were just flirting a little bit with um how kind of lost in in the person's head they were like i think um if i'm not mistaken this track is about someone who's like so into someone that they almost want to kind of merge with them you know what i mean like kind of getting sucked into them can't get the memories of what they did last night with their tongue and everything like that i think you know we're adults in the room we can probably figure out what was going on there it's fantastic music though it's got it's very seductive not just with the the, the lyrics and the how raw they are but but also the vocal performance and just in general, everything else around it. It's very interesting. I may not have gotten everything in there and I was trying to listen out for it, but I was also really just happy with everything else I was hearing. So it's a, you know, it's a good start. We've got the new you track number two for the day before off of the album. Again, fantastic attention to detail with the different sync textures and choices there. Very, very loud. Yeah, fantastic. It kind of reminds you of bands like Bring Me The Horizon and those, that kind of ilk. We've got catchy chord progressions. You know, like the fundamentals of composition have been adhered to, but they also have really interesting sort of drum and kick grooves here, those 16th note part parts on the double kick alongside the, the snares and, and sort of sort of inflections there with the guitar rhythms and time with that and the bass so tight and the kind of stop starty bits you know like messing with the flow of it we've got some legatos that are kind of chopped and there's nice bits of contrast there it's it's fantastic and i kind of like the fact we just let the theme sit by itself without the vocals at that point hope you drown in it it's um wonderful it's almost like they managed to get the vocals to to stand on their own but then simultaneously become a nice interwoven fabric of everything else going on again the the production in this record is tight definitely limited like like definitely not limited as in like it's it's inferior what i mean is like in the mastering chain the limit is doing some work i'm not sure of the dynamic range on this album but that's okay it could also be music b kind of boosting it a little bit but that, that that's that's okay i think that the combination of the, the various little melodic passages here the hammer on pull off bits and the groove there with the mixture of the palm mutes and sort of all those kind of chuggy bits to work alongside the harmonized vocals with the call and responses there to kind of tell more with the with some i don't know what kind of effects they're using on the vocals there but they make them kind of glisten and sort of stand out more it could just be a really sort of fierce compression there there might even be some effects they're making on the vocals to make them more sort of Cynthia or something like that. Oh, obviously the modulation there. They they know what they're doing in that regard for the lower octave stuff. Well, 
there's a tapped riff in the background. Da -da 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 -da. It's like a, it's a sub layer. And what I like about it is that that's, that's counter to what's going on the dun -dun with the drums and the guitar and like the, the box, the, the box reverb. The, the part, the one with like the reverbs inside the compression, and it kind of makes it sound bigger and more boomy. Um, but, uh, you know, the, 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 where they've kind of chopped it up or put it through a synth or like a sequencer or something like that to kind of make it sort of like that. It's, there's wonderful effects there to kind of make it more than just a guitar riff. It's like, it's, I think part of that is to make it work more the synthetic elements. <laughs> Yeah, that, that fantastic guitarist as well. Great accent with the different sort of China and hi-hat symbols on the percussion. Though, because those are diminished. They're like a 0, zero, zero one, one called like, dun, dun, dun. They're just ferociously heavy and they work really well for, for breakdowns, but... I think also because of the whoosh, the kind of reverse takes that kind of flutter in a new transition. It's ferocious, dude. Definitely those genty froggy kind of influences here. It's like that some of the emo kind of stuff in the mid 2000s mixed with like the kind of proggy stuff from the early 2010s with some EDM elements there. And it's just the best of all of those different situations. Oh, we're done. Damn, that was, that was quick. What do I think the new you was about? I think the new you is maybe talking about someone who they've noticed is like reinvented themselves, but that person, maybe the new you is someone who's kind of maybe forgotten about them or screwed people over or hasn't left the first, the, the best impression. Or maybe the old person hasn't redeemed themselves yet. And so they hope they drown. So that's kind of dope. I mean, the music, that's probably my, my this is, that's my favorite out of the two. Uh, I think that even though I appreciated how colorful La Petite Moore is with those layers outside of it, I just can't get past it. Maybe it's a biased thing, but I just cannot get past a nice down to chuggy roof there with lead elements and the tappies in the background. But, but that that's cool though. Both tracks are still solid. We got the Reminiscent Room track number three. Yeah, solid drum technique as well. Changes in the intensity of the hits there that you can really only get by actually playing those parts on a kit. So like I'm trying to figure it out because those guitars sound a lot more like forward or like present than the rest of the elements of the mix. I'm going to go back a little bit to kind of hear through the first verse here just to double check it. But like it just caught my attention now. The guy's got great vocal technique, by the way, as well. Like, the growlies are fine. They're done well in a way that I think he's going to be able to do it for a good long time yet. But it's also just the clean, like, head and chest voice there. This is an act where they've kind of got all the boxes ticked in terms of the fundamentals and exploring and kind of breaching forward. I think they're a, a group which has a future in the industry and within the genre if they can continue to push forward with this. I mean, it's a, genuinely, they um, are coupled with a solid understanding of music theory and composition, as well as sort of studio production, that, that they've got... They're, they're a triple three, you know. Definitely getting those periphery vibes from this.
sorry. That was phenomenal because I knew how huge that sounded with those guitars soaring on the sides with the vocals in the center and the repeaters on the sides and you get locked into the vocals and that's part of why i think the vocals are maybe like a little bit quieter than i would have necessarily um, preferred not because they're bad but because like badly mixed but because they kind of make you they kind of center in on it and then da, 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 and they kind of goes quiet and then da, 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 da. that's what i need from a band where if you're committed to having the song sound quote unquote loud have pauses, have gaps, you know, let the listener rest for a moment because no matter how hardcore you are with your music tastes, it's good to have um, spaces just to appreciate what's come before and to get ready for what's going to happen next. fantastic technique there as well the little drum fill with the double kicks and the sort of tom parts there clearly got someone on the sticks who knows their play know what they're doing you know This is fucking ridiculous. These guys are insane. I don't like to swear in my reviews because I don't know if that's considered professional, but that's, I suppose this is the reaction part of review. And oh my God, that there was so powerful because it's just not something we had before there. We just had this kind of like almost barbershop cordage kind of one at a time development. Itch. You know, it's you can imagine the, the person's like silhouette kind of repeating the lines back at different sides of the stereo field. You really get a feeling for this person going under the spell, falling like, th th they meet him at the edge, he might fall off, you know, like he wants to be saved, but he also doesn't know if he can break away from what's dragging him towards it. It's heart-wrenching, man. And just knowing, they knew to make it quiet. Because I've been hinting at like bringing it down previously in part to the track, which is great foreshadowing. And then boom, they just kind of have like kind of go low like that and just boom. Very use of dynamic range. Hip right, so do some sub drop there. And synth strings on top. Reverse snare takes. Sick. And those vocal chops there were just a great little melodic idea that we put throughout to kind of break up the, the heaviness of the verse parts and the chorus parts because... It sounds like a horrific situation that they're in, you know? But this is the conclusion of my review of a few tracks from existing between the grey and silver glow, which is an album from Harbour Ghost. Um, these guys um, are... Th these guys are ready for the big time, in my personal opinion, and I don't say that lightly. It's very rare that I have a band come in, especially within this genre where I hear it and I go, yeah, no, these guys are going to make it. I think that if they can play their cards right and if they can continue to make music like this and write songs that are so unique set yet so clearly intertwined whether textually or stylistically or by the consistency of the performances alone or the little songwriting nuances that we have in here. I just think, I think honestly that we're on the right track for something really special. And, you know, like Harbour Ghost, I think they're just a couple of people, you know, they're just a couple of musicians who are just extraordinarily passionate about it. They wrote a lot of these songs at 3am in the morning and stuff like that. They, they have a great chemistry together and it shows. I, I think this album, or the three tracks that we have here, a Petit More, Lil Death or something like that as I understand it, was like 
it's about them being attracted to someone and the memories associated with that and trying to come cope with the thoughts in their head and how intense it was for them and i i have a feeling i'm missing some nuance there that i might have missed on the first listen i'm sure i'll have people fill me in on that and that's fine um the new you i think was about someone again that uh had maybe um that potentially uh tried to reinvent themselves and it hasn't been received well and yeah it, it's that, that, again they wanted them to to drown um and the reminisce or maybe they maybe the the new person told them to do that i'm not i'm not sure and then the reminiscent room uh which i believe was someone getting locked in there and kind of having like an ethereal experience in that um in that trance that they are in that kind of overwhelming sort of psych psychotic moment there that the moment of psychosis where they just end up on that cliff edge and they're trying to get someone to help them but maybe that end part where they kind of have all the vocals harmonizing and then boom is that person finally falling off the edge I'm, I'm not sure it's open to interpretation and what i like about this music is that there's so much more to it than just the vocals that it allows you to interpret it in lots of different ways even if the vocals are fairly sort of like at face value you can take them there's just more nuance that makes you think there's more going on but the performance here, whether it was the growls, which the technique was tight for those, uh, whether it was the screaming or the growls, I think they were used properly here. They weren't overused, you know, there's lots of uh, more melodic, kind of clean vocals to really work with how beautifully um, textured the harmonies and melodies were within the, each of the tracks. I, I, and the guy could just also sing, you know, the head and chest voice was fantastic, little bits of legato and vibrato passages and the heart whether it was the harmonies or the bits of vocal modulation or the vocal chops we we absolutely slammed it out of the park with this one i've got no complaints whatsoever with the way it was approached and portrayed we've got musicians here again who just genuinely care about their craft and they the, the singer is clearly polished and experienced and told the stories they wanted to and when, especially in that part at the end of the reminiscent room where things went quiet and we had the different sort of octave stage parts and the harmonies etc one at a time you could that's when i could tell yeah this is very special this is incredibly deliberate they have a clear vision for what they want and they're being raw and unfiltered about it and i i think that's great the structure of each of these tracks was nice and short as well they're really short tracks and i think that they are talented and skilled enough and and competent all the necessary is to write longer music but i also had to show some love for the fact that they didn't because quite honestly nowadays no matter how good you are if the track is too long a lot of people aren't going to listen to it even within some of the harder genres like progressive metal gent etc sometimes a four minute song is just a little bit too much and it's kind of sad but it's what it is especially when you consider they're like how wonderfully written and performed these tracks are but i think that the choice to go between two and four minutes for each of these was a great one um, lots of love for that no complaints at all on that front i think that they showcase the best elements of these uh musicians and i reckon i understand i think they communicated the story that they needed to they had lots of variation in the different guitar bass synth drum parts uh, with lots of different little riffs and ideas in there that came back to sort of catch your hook lines and progressions that were more sort of like traditional which was which is great because let's be honest there's nothing wrong with writing a catchy hook even in metal you know it, it, that doesn't mean it's lame it just means you're being smart about your songwriting people have to be able to groove to enjoy, enjoy it quite honestly especially with how competitive the music industry is i i think there's nothing wrong with it if you want any chance at a career you've got to find a way to appeal without completely sort of like selling yourself out or trying to be something you're not you've got to find a way to to, to come to appeal to the the want for human beings to groove and vibe to music and having those kind of chord progressions helps along with that it was the way that they played it the way they kind of kind of cut up and sort of messed with the tones and waveforms of the some of the tracks especially in like the new you and other elements there that that made it sort of unique but honestly i'm really impressed with it for that um you know clearly these are instruments musicians who can really play their instruments the drums the, the guitars were phenomenal we didn't have any guitar solos but we didn't need to i think that some of the little kind of licky uh, semi lead riffs that we had that were kind of maybe rhythm stuff that were double tracked were great shit showed it clear for efficiency for the instrument but it's also just the drum fills with the eighth and sixteenth parts and some triplets occasionally but just knowing when to play less as well like these guys knew when to sort of step away from the complicated stuff and make it very bare bones that's why i liked there being gaps because it's like oh i've had a lot of stuff going on it sounds huge oh it's quiet now great you know awesome because if you have it loud all the time it gets boring and it's 
You don't want that, especially on a first impression. Anyone can make a loud song, but it's about knowing the nuance and the change in the energy levels and how to make do them in a way where it's effective. With La Petite More, I was surprised with how much it wasn't like what I heard from the other two tracks, especially at the beginning. I kind of like the fact they went for a softer kind of vibe there with the, the sampled kicks and etc. And some of the other elements there. We didn't get the heavy distortion until near the end. It was teased at there was going to be more ferocious stuff going on. But it kind of didn't give it away and it showed the flexibility of these guys and the way that they behave them and operate as a band. I kind of like the fact that my um, expectations weren't kind of like it wasn't predictable it was interesting without needing to have chuggy guitars or like slamtastic kind of drum grooves it built up a story and had a harmonies and melodies within it and bass lines and different chord note accents there that kept the vibe going and allowed the singer to have a bit of precedence before we get into the heavier stuff later on i think that was fine it was a nice gentle development towards that place almost a balladesque kind of thing you know the new you and a reminiscence room were a lot less um, subtle about their like main sort of like core sound there um, but but then of course you know that was the point is that once we got into the fourth and seven tracks of the album we were already kind of familiar with a lot of what they could do and they just needed to continue to provide more of the good stuff in interesting different ways there were interesting choices with some of the synth leads especially where they kind of the way they were processed because that's more of a studio fix thing but the way they were done finding that one tiny little niche in the frequency spectrum and kind of allowing it to kind of glisten there. It's almost like we knew that we could get the guitars and basses and drums to sound to sound huge, but we wanted it to sound almost ethereal and otherworldly. And especially when we're talking about stuff like the reminiscent room and all that, and like the petite la petite more where, where you've got yourself going in your own head and everything like that, and then you, you a lot of these kind of psychological elements, our heads aren't clear. They're often got brain fog and all sorts of stuff going on. So it would make less sense for things to be completely cutting. Although when we did remove those sort of synthy kind of pad like elements there, it hits like a train. There were bass drops and octave shifts there along with off shifts on the vocals there. And it just chopped and clapped hard, man. And especially some of those flat fifth parts where we had the chugs and the breakdowns, they were phenomenal. They knew how to be pretty and they knew how to be heavy. And there was lots of range in here. And I really, I know I've been going on a little bit in this section here. There's just, I could keep talking about these tracks for days. There's just so much little bits and nuances in here to take in that I, I'm trying to kind of keep it succinct though. Basically, they do good composition and songwriting. They know the good music and they, and they wrote it. And um, within the genre, I think they have a place in the, in the industry if they continue to, to move at it. Um, the studio recording, mixing and mastering was great. Um, aside from like the, the kind of like uncertainty about the vocal levels at the beginning, which were clarified later on. I think as these guys are just so good at what they do that they know how to make the vocals a little bit quieter to kind of make us kind of suck us in a little bit. And I adore that. The risk there is thinking, oh, but what if I don't want to get sucked in? And I think part of what they're doing there with these less kind of guitar, bass, drums, sort of centric elements there with the synths and other plucks and strings, etc., is giving people from a wider audience an opportunity to enjoy it and then kind of be like, oh, well, I've spent three minutes on, you know, two minutes on a little petite more. Let's just go with the drums and guitar. And it just kind of slams you there and you're like, oh, it wasn't so bad. I wonder what the new you is like. And then boom. And I can imagine you get through his album pretty quickly at that point, but the vocals were filled and EQ'd well with lots of interesting effects on there, bits of reverb and delay sometimes, a little bit of vocal modulation, some pitch shifting or something like that. The guitar sounded filthy as hell, man. They were nicely produced, don't get me wrong, but they were heavy as hell as well. The bass was full sounding and thick in there. They had different bass parts there, some synths, and maybe they had an electric bass as well, but it sounded full and incredible. Um, the drums were fantastic there, lots of different drum textures, but the main kit that came in when it wasn't the sample parts of the chord note grooves or other sort of like clicky parts was that it was just wonderful, nice side chaining into the to the bass without sort of cutting it too much like a dance track. And ultimately it just, it, it grooved really well with the rhythm guitar parts and you went to fill and kind of come over over, and there was nice articulation of the symbols at the top as well. Um, it was nice and bright, but not too overexposed. The synth parts that were all around the center field and, and the sides of the stereo field kind of fluffed up and filled it along and the strings would kind of shine upwards and, and you'd have other cuts and little bits that were done deliberately to the waveform to kind of 
sort of make it more interesting to listen to. And I don't know, I, I, it's just it's just very, it's a higher level kind of nuanced stuff that you really get when you're at a point where it's like, okay, I know that this is a good song, but how do we make it better? I can imagine these guys would have sat there for a long time, really trying to sort of like improve upon it and kind of smash it out of the park. And I think the extra time was worth it because it was more than just your typical song within this genre. It was like, it was, it was a passion project. And I think, I really hope they continue to have that passion for music as they continue. They've got a future if they can continue to work at it, as I've said many times before in this review without wanting to overstate it. It was nice, again, the whole mix was nice and wide in the stereo field. There were no resonant frequencies in, in, this, in the frequency spectrum, you know. I, I was kind of unsure about the guitars with the leveling in the second track, The New You. They might have been a little bit too loud for my taste said the beginning, but I suppose it was just a kind of like a deliberate sub-layering thing of some of the percussive elements with the toms. So that's fine. And the fact that I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt says something about how I feel about their music anyways. And um, yeah, it was nice and loud without pumping. There, I'm not sure about the amount of dynamic range though. There was not a huge amount of dynamic range. It was incredibly loud, but it could also be my software that's kind of boosting it a little bit if it was, but... I don't think so. I don't think Music Me does that. I just like to cover my bases. But this is my review of Harbour Ghost and their album Existing Between the Grey, A Silver Glow. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please do go show them some love via their various social medias and uh, the digital stream platforms. And stay cool and stay safe. And please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time as they need the help more than they with all the crazy stuff going on in the world. And I'll catch you in the next review. Spider hands out. <laughs>